The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Open BXRX Remote, brought to you from my living workspace, Chari Executive Suite. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café con Leche every Friday. Here's what's coming up in today's show. Lady Things All will learn five ways to make 2022 the best year ever when we speak with career coach and TV contributor Elizabeth Kuratza. After that, we'll be joined by multifaceted performer Caridad La Bruja de la Luz to discuss her one woman show from poor to Rico. Then we'll speak to psychologist and founder of Ganma's Women's Institute, Gloria M. Rodriguez, as she discusses Visiones 2022 virtual spiritual workshop. Later on in the show, Bobby C. brings us an up-to-date with the latest headlines in the world of sports. And lastly, this week's Open Artist Spotlight shines on R&B singer and songwriter Julian King, followed by a performance at the end of the show. So uh, sit back y prepárate. All this and more is headed your way, because now we are officially open. <laughs> Welcome to Open. I'm Rina Valentin, your host, Cafe Con Leche, for the next hour, inviting you to get social with us online. That is, tweet us and follow us on Instagram at Broxnet TV and like us on Facebook at Open Broxnet Television. And of course, while you're there, follow me on Twitter, FB, Instagram, Insta Stories, and LinkedIn at Rina Valentin. Our first guest is a career coach, a TV contributor, and former Reuters TV anchor who uses her 15 plus years of experience to train, coach, strategize, and help people boost job performances, excel in their careers, and find their voices as a leader. She joins us today to give us tips on how to make 2022 our best year ever. Please welcome to the show, career coach, Elizabeth Corrupta. Hello and welcome. Hello, Rena. I'm so excited to be here today with you. What I forgot to mention in your introduction is that you are also a BronxNet alum. I am. I was a BronxNet reporter, very proud and had the most wonderful experience with you all at BronxNet. Well, welcome back, or should we say welcome back home, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Your travels uh, abroad uh, <laughs> in experience as well as uh, explorations in, in different career paths. So, I, so let's talk about this particular career path and what inspired you to head in this direction of becoming a career coach. Well, that's a great question, Rena. Um, while I was at Reuters Television, I was a television anchor, as you mentioned, and I really enjoyed it. And what I enjoyed most was when I would be connecting perhaps with somebody I was about to interview. And if I noticed that they were nervous, if they were sweating, if they were stumbling over their words, trying to encourage them and giving them advice on how to speak with confidence, how to feel confident. Um, it was so rewarding. It was so rewarding when I was able to share my tips and then actually see it come to fruition. And these people were able to appear more confident, feel more confident because years ago myself, um, I was not very confident. I was very self-doubting. So to be able to teach people um, what I've learned through the years is so rewarding. I, I get it. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, the past two years has uh, seen a, a lot of people pivot in their careers. And so, but I do want to open up with just mentioning, you know, New York has just started reopening. And um, well, just as we started reopening, we stepped into 2022 and we are set back once again to continue working remotely due to the surge in the Omicron variant. And so, what do you recommend that people do as a means of balancing out their personal life with their workflow? Well, another great question. You know, a big thing that comes to mind is boundaries. So 
it is challenging when you're working from home, you've got home and personal life and you've got work life all kind of entangled. And it's really important to set priorities and figure out for you, what is most important for me? Am I getting burned out because I'm doing too many, too many hours because I'm having a hard time cutting things off, right? I recommend creating a time for yourself where I'm finished with work or I'm taking two hours off. And if I have to send a couple emails later or a few calls or post a few things for my business, I'll do that later. But it's really about setting priorities, making sure you're not getting burned out and really taking care of yourself. You know, um, because you're a mom, such as myself, and because of the fact that we're also being bounced around like a yo-yo, right? Uh, because at first it, it was kind of like, oh, the kids are back in person and now they're back um, in, in remote. And, and so there's that component as well. And while you're saying, yes, take time for yourself, how does one find that time, let's say, if they have a really young child? Yes. Well, again, like trying to figure out what are my priorities for me? Because as a mom, you're taking care of kids, you may have a partner, you're taking care of aging parents, perhaps other relatives. And if there's nothing left to give and there's nothing left in the gas tank, you're not going to be your best self. We all know how we feel. We might get cranky or snappy or not our best selves. And when we're not our best selves, then we just feel worse. And that is what we want to avoid. So creating a list, putting it on paper or in the notes of your phone somewhere where you can access it, what are my priorities? What do I need to do for me? Don't feel guilty for putting yourself first. When I say that, it doesn't mean you're just going to forget about kids and aging parents and all your other responsibilities, but it's making yourself a priority because when you make yourself a priority, that means you're going to be fulfilled and you're going to have more to give. You're going to feel like your best self instead of feeling like your worst self. Yeah, it does make a difference. And I, I've been sharing also that, that philosophy that they of of what they say in the airlines right when you're about to take off like you have to put the oxygen tank uh, rather the oxygen mask on yourself before you can help thy neighbor exactly 100 yeah. percent agree yeah yeah it's just making the time right that's why we're speaking to you yes <laughs> <laughs> and so um i i want to also just bring up uh your your new podcast the speaking up podcast and um uh one of the uh episodes is geared towards vision boards and this is like a month of vision board creations um can you just share with us the top three reasons vision boards should be practiced and and also can you also note uh or mention how many times a vision board should be created because I'm used to just creating it at the top of the year, but in your podcast, there seems to be like a, a seasonal practice possibly. Yes, yes, yes. So whenever you want to make a vision board, that is the right time for you. And it's important, like a vision board helps you create the life that you want and achieve your goals. And what I say to my clients is, just like when you're creating a document of your goals, your vision board is also your goal. So if something no longer serves you on that vision board, you're gonna take it off. If that glue is so stuck on there and you can't get it off, you're gonna put something on top of it, right? So you always wanna be editing. That vision board is not set in stone. And you can have multiple vision boards. I don't wanna overwhelm anyone. So if one is enough for you, which is enough for me, um, you go with one. But if you feel like this is something that you really enjoy, maybe it's an outlet to de-stress, you can do more than one. You can do your professional life. You could do your personal life. You could do your spiritual life. Whatever resonates for you, I say, go for it. Wonderful. And, and the benefits of the vision board is not solely just taking out the images and pasting them on, on paper. And, and it's so that you can actually be in the space or, of visualizing exactly what it is that you're um, hoping to attain as a goal or aiming towards as a, a target, right? Yes. Like you just mentioned a target. It's being able to see yourself the way you want to see yourself. You're visualizing what life can offer to you and what you can attain, that it is attainable. Sometimes when we write our goals down, they still feel far away. It still feels like you might be second guessing yourself. So that's what I love about a vision board in addition to written goals is that 
you can actually see yourself. You can cut your face out and put it on there and be like, might feel a little bit uncomfortable at first, but then you'll get used to seeing it so much that it becomes normal for you to see yourself in this role, in this position, um, having this success. And that's what I love about vision boarding. Yeah, plus it's fun. Now, before we go, I, I definitely want to talk about another episode. Obviously, you can hear I, I had a, a ball listening to your podcast, <laughs> which I recommend everyone uh, tune into. It's called the Speaking Up Podcast. And um, this other episode that I was listening to was how to up your side hustle, which is how we opened up with uh, everyone pivoting. And, and it seems like a, a lot of the guests that we have on air have shifted. And so um, I wondered if you had any top recommendations you can uh, assist someone who may be watching in, in just taking the leap. Yes, and it is. It definitely is a leap. And it can feel fearful and it can feel scary. That said, what you want to do is have a plan and strategy before you take the leap. So, you know, for example, if you're thinking of, you know, starting a new business, um, maybe it's a yoga practice, for example. You want to talk to people, as many people that have a yoga practice or something similar or someone who has their own business, because people love to share what they maybe wish they could have done differently. You want to learn from other people's mistakes so you don't make the same. I'm not saying you're never going to misstep because we all do, but kind of having that knowledge and that deep research in your back pocket and then part of your strategy is going to be very helpful. Another thing I like to tell people is ask, ask for help, ask for help. We cannot do it all on our own. And especially as women, we often feel like we can, which I know we can. That said, <laughs> often two heads are better than one, right? And to have more information and more support while you're going through this journey is going to help you succeed again, because you're going to feel like your best self and you're going to feel prepared. Wonderful. Thank you so much, career coach Elizabeth Corazza. And uh, well, I hope you guys were tuning in and listening. She just gave us a whole bunch of ideas on how to make 2022 our best year ever. And for more on Elizabeth and how to strategize your year, please visit Elizabeth Corazza, um, and that is with a C dot com, and follow her on social media at Elizabeth Corazza. All right, we got to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a one woman show paying homage to her indigenous Afro Latina roots. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back. Our next guest is an award-winning multifaceted performer who's taking the stage by storm again in her new one-woman show from poor to rico, a love letter to her indigenous Afro-Taino Hibero culture in Puerto Rico to spiritually enrich audiences during this time of crisis and to help all imagine something more than Puerto Rico being a playground for the 1%. Please welcome to the show, no stranger to the show, my sorority sister, who is killing it kindly, Carida, la bruja de la luz. Woo! Woo! Hi! <laughs> welcome, welcome, oh my gosh, I'm so happy to have you on. Pero, you. We, I want to start this off correctly by first and foremost, wishing you cumpleaños feliz. <laughs> Feliz. And we're going to remix Thank it you. to the age of Aquarius. Aquarius, age of Aquarius. <laughs> we're going into the golden age of Aquarius. Talk about it. <laughs> yes, uh, where we're going to have a, a huge awakening. And so this is super, super important, important time. A lot of beautiful things are shifting truth is being revealed we're you know living now without this veil you know we're removing the veil and and embracing what truth brings well you know that's the silver lining behind this pandemic and uh where we are but um we're gonna we're here to talk about your new show from poor to rico and i will say it was quite fascinating to follow you um through social media and um 
be part of your development in your research in Puerto Rico. I know you resided out there for a bulk of time. Uh, congratulations months. on the Jerome Gunhill uh, Foundation uh, grant. I, I, yes. I know you want to- Jerome fellowship. Hill Artist Fellowship. I'm a fellow. I'm a Jerome Hill Artist Fellow uh, from 2019 to 2020. It was a two-year fellowship. I used part of that uh, grant to travel. Uh, and I used part of that to live for five months in Puerto Rico and um, in Rio Grande, next to El Yunque, next to Lois Aldea, and Loisa, um, Piñones, San Juan, Viejo San Juan, working with the poetry, uh, Poets Passage. Um, but yes, so, so. Um, no, I'm just, you know, I wanted to open up with that because the, there's something really admirable about your drive now to just dig back into the past and kind of resurface, um, I guess, issues that um, are kind of repeating themselves. Well, you know, the poem that I wrote, Poor to Rico, I wrote uh, right after Hurricane Maria. And um, my, my grandmother was out there at the time, my father, and we didn't know where they were. We, we had no communication. It was very traumatic. And then my grandmother wound up being displaced by the hurricane, living in Texas with my uncle. So then I started writing this poetry also to help Oscar Lopez Rivera get free. There was a lot of things happening during this time. Um, so the poetry was there. The pain was there for my people seeing the, you know, our Puerto Rican people be displaced, a mass exodus that was equivalent to what happened in the 50s, because my family was displaced in the 50s because the uh, army base came in. So it's it feels like 1492 all over again. It's like Groundhog's Day of a perpetual colonization, witnessing our paradise being stripped away, you know, and our culture being diminished. And it's up to us to speak the truth, keep the awareness going, keeping the fight going really for for truth and equality. Our, our schools are shut down, our hospitals are shut down. It was vulture capitalism, you know, oh, it how was you disaster that? capitalism. <laughs> and yeah. so from Puerto Rico is my love letter to Puerto Rico, to Puerto Ricanos and having them see the Puerto Rico that I love, the, the Puerto Rico that I know. And I have photography that my father and his best friend, Ronnie Kessler, took in 1972. And, um, you know- Are we gonna do a show and tell? Photos <laughs> like this, of photos like this, Los Bueyes, you know, being pulled in the, to, to cultivate the land where we learned, where when we lived off the land, I want us to be able to go back to that. You know, right. now Puerto, Puerto Rico imports all of its fruits, you know, because it's a colony of the United States. And, um, you know, there's a fight for statehood and I, I don't want statehood for Puerto Rico. I don't want Puerto Rico to become a, another Hawaii, you know, and we still right. have a chance as Puerto well, Rican. It is somewhat commercialized though. It is, it, it, uh, it's already happening. But I know, I the know. awareness you know, of a Puerto Rico that I always want remembered uh, needs to happen. And that's what the show is about, really. It's really my love letter. It's satirical at parts, you know, because we within our own people have our differences, you know, and, I, and I'm looking for a way to unify, <laughs> unify us all. And this is a good time too, right? Because I know that the uh, the first rendition of it, which you're doing, you're workshopping it until its actual premiere in June, is going to be virtual. And while that's sold out, I'm sorry, guys, but you, you know we're here to talk. No, about it's actually that. in person at Ostos. Oh, Seventy five seats were sold in twelve hours. Ah. Even though it was it was free, <laughs> but the, all the reservations, seventy five seats were reserved. Uh, in Ostos, in the beautiful theater that Ostos has, you know, so they'll be able to have to social distance and stuff. But um, I'm not going to stream it. I am going to film it uh, for my purposes and, you know, to develop it into June and then in June have the premiere. And I've been in works for music with Anthony Carrillo. 
um, who we've partnered together many times on stage in doing musicals together, acknowledging like Selena Gonzalez's music for the Caribbean Culture Center. Um, but we're working on original music, so it's also musical. And well, thank you for clarifying that because I was under the impression that it was going to be virtual and that you were shooting it at Hostos, but um, wow. Um, because of the grant from Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship and Pepatian, who's producing it, Dr. Jane Gabriels, um, is has always been a huge supporter of my work, is a dear friend of mine, and because of Ostos, Pepatian, and Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship, I can share my work free. My people don't have to pay to see this, which is so amazing. You it know? is amazing because it's important for them to really get it and make uh, culture and art and development and all, all of that part of their, their development, right? Of, of their cultivating uh, new existence because I feel like we're all pivoting and there's this rediscovery of who we are, who we've been, and um, the way you convey it is through your artistry. And it's really refreshing that you're gonna be doing it in person and that you're offering it for free. Thank you. I am so excited. This is a big deal for me. I haven't done a one woman show since 2009 when I did Boogie Rican Boulevard at Bregon, at a Puerto Rican traveling theater when Miriam Colon was there, you know, and- I remember um, that, I went, I saw that one. Yeah, and you know, I went through some traumatic things after that. And I had like a phobia about doing a one woman show. That's why I've done a lot of musicals. I bring, I had a whole entourage of people because I was afraid to stand alone and I'm no longer afraid. And this is also, a, you know, a journey into that, into that, you know, releasing whatever it was that was holding me back and just sharing what it is that I love from a place of love, you know, for the culture that I adore, our Puerto Rican people and our New Yorican people, you know, our New Yorican culture is, you know, I was in denial of being a New Yorican at one point. Like I was like, no, I'm strictly Puerto Rican. But then I learned that I'm a bridge between the two. And, um, and, and it's just, I feel like it's my duty to, to share this work in honor of my ancestors and in honor of my family. My, my, my last matriarch that's living is my grandmother in Puerto Rico, you know, and I, I'm doing this for her. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I'm taking it in. That's why you, you're just watching me go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we've known each other for very many years. And I mean, we can't go over your entire trajectory, which is quite impressive. It's very impressive. And as a, a person who's grown with you and developed, I'm, I'm, personally proud of you right and i'm saying that on air because um as artists we we kind of go in whatever direction you know the creativity is driving us but you seem to be very clear about where your messaging is is going at and what it is that you want to be remembered for you know a lot of racists say go back where you came from you know and this is a journey from poor to rico because rico is what we have always been Beautiful. Heart and spirit and everything. Brava, brava. Woo, everybody. Calidad de la luz, la brua. <laughs> and once again, um, bueno, from Puerto Rico is actually going to be performed on January 28th. And uh, while there's no tickets for that, be sure to follow her and visit her website because you'll be able to learn more about the actual premiere, which is happening in June of 2022. And her website is caridadelaluz.com. And be sure to follow her on Instagram at La Bruja NYC. All right, we have to take a quick break. But when we return, we'll hear all about an annual spiritual workshop servicing women empowerment don't go anywhere love you rena hey everyone welcome back our next guest is a counseling psychologist who for the past 24 years has been a professor of psychology at bronx community college and is the first faculty director of the first women's center at bcc she is the founder and director of the Anmas Women's Institute, which is a space for women to reclaim, honor, and express their divine feminine gifts and unique human potential. This year marks the 24th annual Visiones Retreat. Uh, please welcome founder of the Anmas Women's Institute and creator of Visiones, Gloria M. 
Rodriguez. Hello, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So wonderful to be here. I really appreciate you inviting me on to talk about Visiones and then some. Yeah, well, uh, happy, healthy new year. And thank it's you. lovely that you continue offering these services uh, amid the, the our current circumstances. I mean, I think it's really important. Um, and on a personal, I, I do want to open up with uh, just expressing my gratitude to you uh, for providing um, the meditation uh, forum that uh, you, you've been doing, uh, I want to say for two years um, via phone, as well as the intention setting that you started at the top of the year. I think um, what you've been offering is so needed right now, uh, now more than ever even though you've been doing it for, for, for very many years. So let, let's talk about what's in store for this year's uh, Visiones. Yeah, well, I think you're absolutely correct. I mean, we've been, um, just to kind of get back to the meditation circle, we started that in um, March two years ago when COVID first hit. And, um, you know, we were all in, um, in need of connection and community and spaces where we could come together and support each other and um, and you know and and help one another in dealing with issues around isolation and all the things grief and all the things that were happening. Um, I mean, unfortunately, that still continues, right? I mean, we're still dealing with many of those challenges and you know um, our mental and emotional health have been extremely impacted by all of these challenges that we have been experiencing on top of all of the injustices that have happened, particularly over the last two years. So, <clears throat> so we have remained consistent in offering these spaces um, for women and um, Visiones has been, you know, a staple workshop that offering for De Almas and particularly to begin the year with a, an intention, right? To begin the year intentional about how we want to move forward for our lives in the next year, right? And what that means is that we have to kind of think about and look at what has happened in the year before and begin to kind of release some of that, heal some of that, forgive some of that, right? Um, in order to move forward, feeling the sense of freedom and a lightness of being and hope and all of the things that we want to experience in our lives. This year, we are doing it virtually. Last year, we did it virtually as well. I didn't realize how it was going to, you know, kind of translate in a virtual environment. We had over 80 women register last year for the workshop. It was a day and a half. Um, it, we had a various number of facilitators and it was amazing. I mean, I think the, again, intention, you know, and I've been facilitating this and the facilitators that I bring on, right, are very skilled in what they do. And so the energy remains the same, right? It just kind of bursts out of the computers and everybody is still feeling it as we're doing our own individual work together. This year, the theme of the workshop is stretching beyond, right? So stretching beyond, I mean, I just think that that's an amazing sort of metaphor, right? Stretching beyond the past, stretching beyond old ways of thinking and perceiving about oneself, stretching beyond. Um, I think that's where we are now, though. I think that's where we're, we're, we've all arrived, you know, like collectively, because we, we've uh, I don't think any of us thought that we would be going through this again at the top of the new year. Right, right. I agree. I mean, I think, you know, we were all like, you know, we were all feeling, you know, the, the, the joy of being outside again. And then all of a sudden, you know, this hit and right. so we're kind of moving back indoors. Although things are starting to open up, we have to do it mindfully and we have to do it consciously, right? Making the right decisions about how we choose to be social, how we choose to be in gatherings, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I do think that the piece around stretching beyond is really important because there's always more that our spirit, that our heart, that our soul wants us to manifest in the world, wants us to grow and to be in, you know, the world and have a life that is um, meaningful and purposeful, right? 
And so until the day that we die, we're always a work in progress. We're always growing. We're always, you know, changing. We're always making choices, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that um, stretching beyond and visiones, the thing about visiones that I think is, is kind of sets us apart is that we're not about at the top of the year setting resolutions. Resolutions right. don't work. Research has shown three months into the year, people don't even remember what their resolutions are. I don't even use that word, right? But this is a time for us, again, my favorite word right now is to be intentional. Right. And intentionality comes with self-awareness. And so a lot of my work is really to kind of peel back the layers of things that we may not even be aware of, that we may not even be conscious of that's holding us back from doing the things that we, that we are really called to do from being authentic from you know living a life that has some joy and meaning and purpose in it um let's no talk about that for a quick second about yeah. joy and meaning right because i think people uh right now in this particular stage at least a lot of the guests that we have on the show a lot of people have been pivoting i mean we even have a a, a career coach at the top of the show in this particular episode who uh is discussing like uh being able to like capitalize off of your side hustle and what we've noticed is that a lot of people have shifted like drastically in either their careers their lifestyles uh and so uh once again at the top of the year you're saying we're not talking about resolutions we're talking about this expansion right the sacred stretch that you're referencing and so um participating in visiones which i've participated in the past in this particular one um what what do you think people will be able to get out of it considering that it's been uh minimized down to a three and a half hour uh, experience well you know that's a good question because i think the intention and the ways in which we structured it is um still of a high quality right i mean and i also think that the vibration that we carry into the space is really what sets the, the, the tone and provides a container for everyone who's participating to get the most out of it, right? There is, an, uh, for people who are participating, there has to be an, a willingness. There has to be a willingness to go deep, right? There has to be a willingness to stretch. There has to be a willingness to participate in the exercises, in the reflective activities, in all of what the facilitators are going to be offering us to get the maximum right benefit. And I do think that you're right. I mean, I think that this last, these last two years, everyone has been changed by the last two years. People have, you know, change careers. People have decided to move to another yeah. part of the country or the world. People have decided to, you know, leave relationships. People have decided to deal with, you know, healing certain relationships that they hadn't been, in, you know, that had been estranged from. I mean, I think that, you know, that is a very individual um, experience. And what we're asking is that if you decide to participate in this, right, that you are going to get the, the most out of it by being open and receptive and willing to listen to your heart, listen to your soul, and to be able to do this in a community of love. I mean, this is a bell hooks, you know, um, I love, you know, just using that, 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 that term communities of love, right? That bell hooks coin, because I think that that is needed now more than ever. And I think women have the capacity to nourish and nurture and, um, and support one another in, in our journey. I, I agree. And, and, and that's why we always have you on. At least we try to have you on annually to uh, uh, move this forward and, and bring it to our viewers. And so before we go uh, really quickly, where, where could people sign up to participate in this year's Visiones? Right, because we're doing it differently this year. Um, we also, I mean, Visiones has always been a fee-based workshop. We're offering a sliding scale. So if um, anyone who is interested, they should email us at dealmasinfo at gmail.com. I will personally respond and give them all the information that they need to participate. 
Wonderful. Thank you. Gloria and Rodriguez, once again, you guys, uh, Visiones is taking place on Saturday, January 22nd. That's happening between 11 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. And for more information, you can email her at dealmasinfo at gmail.com. All right, stay tuned because Bobby C's Weekly Sports Roundup is coming up next. Begin with the local sports community rallying together following a tragic fire here in the Bronx on January 9th. Manhattan College Athletics collected proceeds from their men's basketball game against Canisius this past Sunday and donated it to the Bronx Fire Relief Fund to support victims of the deadly apartment building fire. Meantime, the Fordham Student Athlete Advisory Council is working on ways Fordham Athletics can help and support the individuals and families of this tragedy. They encourage Bronx sites to give to Catholic Charities, an organization that already has a sizable footprint in the community, ensuring that your aid goes to those in need. The Bronx fire took the lives of 17 people, including eight children, and injured over 60 other tenants' lost belongings and personal items in this tragic event. Fundraisers will help provide support for the victims and their families and help distribute emergency relief supplies. The Bronx College sports programs aren't just rallying together either. The local pro teams are assisting as well. To aid in relief and recovery efforts, the Brooklyn Nets and the New York Liberty donated $15,000 to the Mayor's Fund, a nice assist from the two pro basketball teams. Back on the college hardwood, locally the Iona men's basketball team slides in here at number four, taking down Manhattan in some better news in a rivalry matchup last Friday night in New Rochelle. Nelly Jr. Joseph had 13 points and Iona dished out a season best 23 assists to defeat Manhattan 88-76 on Friday night. They remain unbeaten in the MAC Conference. Bronxite Jose Perez scored a season high 27 points for the Jaspers. Strong week for Perez. He also netted 33 against Canisius on Sunday. In at three, the Brooklyn Nets are battling atop the Eastern Conference with the Chicago Bulls for the best team in the East. They'll have to do so, though, unfortunately, for the next four to six weeks without star Kevin Durant. Durant will miss four to six with a sprained MCL in his left knee. James Harden and Camp Thomas are all about stepping up for the Nets in the meantime. Here's more. They're getting better every game they're learning. Um, and I think one thing that they bring consistently is their effort. That's all that matters. Um, obviously, De'Ron is very skilled. Got really, really good hands and finishing and rebounding the basketball. And then Kess, you know, defensively on the wing is, is active. Uh, didn't knock it down to three. Um, it's huge for us. But they bring that energy and that effort every single night, and that's contagious. And that, that rubs off on uh, each and every individual on the team. Oh, it was good. Everybody likes each other. Um, and we're just playing our role. Like, whatever role we're putting, we're playing our role, and we're just doing our best in our role. So I feel like we're just all, you know, excelling in the role that we're put in. So I feel like that's what's really helping us. Oh, it felt good. You know, we always come out. We always come out, and you know, we're down. We always trying to come back. So it felt good just to be up early, you know, have a little bit of cushion. So, you know, so that's just so good to have that finally at the home court. In it too, newest Nick Cam Reddish believes he'll rise to the challenge as well. Reddish acknowledged his career didn't take flight in Atlanta, but with a new head coach and a bigger stage, the six foot eight small forward thinks the Knicks got back something special last week when they traded Kevin Knox and a conditional first round pick to the Hawks. He just turned 22 years old and the former Duke star is reunited with his college teammate RJ Barrett in orange and blue. Reddish was the 10th pick in the 2019 NBA Draft. Here's an elated Cam. I mean, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm just ready to get started. Um, you know, I'm from Norristown, PA, so I had a little, been in New York a couple times when I was growing up, so um, I love the energy of the city and I'm just looking forward to it. Honestly, I, I really didn't know what was going on. I kind of, I literally woke up to it, so it was kind of just a, got to get to New York, you know, like, it's been overwhelming a little bit. Uh, There's a lot going on, but um, I think I'm here for a reason. So I'm just going to try to take full advantage of the opportunity and um, 
have fun with it. He actually called me yesterday, so you know we had a we had a good talk yesterday, and um, you know when he gets here, you know I hope I could I could help him, you know, gel with the team. He's six eight. He's very skilled. He shoot the ball. Um, finish with both hands. Plays great defense. So you know you're getting a getting a good uh, good talented player. To the one spot, the Buffalo Bills handed the New England Patriots an embarrassing 47-17 wildcard loss on Saturday night. An historic embarrassment, actually. They became the first team ever to have a perfect offensive performance. They scored touchdowns on every single one of their possessions, except the kneel downs at the end of the game. They didn't face a single fourth down in the entire game, so they had no punts or field goals. They also held on to the ball when they had it, turning the ball over zero times until the Bills did what they just did. No team in NFL history had played a game with no field goals, turnovers, or punts. They became the first team in the Super Bowl era to score a touchdown on their first seven playoff possessions and the second team in the Super Bowl era to score a touchdown on seven straight possessions. Quarterback Josh Allen also became the first Bills quarterback in history to throw five touchdowns and zero interceptions in a playoff game. Buffalo looking quite super this time of year. They move on to take on Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs this Sunday at 6.30 p.m. in the divisional round. And to the back end of 5 on 5 we go on the ice. The New York Rangers skate in Carolina tonight with a quick return to play on Saturday night too where the Broadway Blue Shirts will be in Arizona. Puck drop for both games is 7 p.m. At 2, the Orange and Blue will wrap up their Madison Square Garden homestand on Sunday when the Knicks welcome the LA Clippers to MSG for a 1 p.m. start. At 3, the Nets are on the road in San Antonio tonight for an 8.30 p.m. tip-off. Brooklyn returns to the hardwood on Sunday in Minnesota as well. That game gets rolling at 8 p.m. here on the East Coast. The NFL Divisional Round takes the fourth spot this coming weekend. Cincinnati will be at Tennessee at 4.30 Eastern in the AFC on Saturday. The NFC will feature San Francisco at Green Bay in Saturday's nightcap at 8.15 p.m. Sunday will not only have the Bills, but there's also an earlier matchup at 3 p.m. as Tampa Bay and Tom Brady continue their quest to repeat on the gridiron. And at 1, we have a new twist here to our weekly sports roundup. The Bronx Player of the Week. Weekly, we will highlight the best of the best from the BX. Jose Perez was certainly in the running this past week, but our first ever honor goes to another Hooper. To the C-list we go, so you can find out who that is. The Spalding Hoop Hall Classic at the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts always brings out the best competition from around the country. And one Bronx star put on some show last weekend. 2024 shooting guard Ian Jackson of Cardinal Hayes is well on his way to bigger and better things if he continues at this pace. The six foot four sophomore looks like he deserves consideration for at least the top five in his class and maybe even the top spot in the upcoming rankings. Jackson led his team to a blowout win, scoring 30 points. He is fluid and explosive. He's performed very well recently on the EYBL circuit and with USA Basketball. It is clear to see he's got real star potential, and he's already got a nickname too, folks. They call him Captain Jack. Connecticut head coach Dan Hurley was on hand and immediately offered a scholarship, joining others like Kansas State, Nebraska, Oklahoma State, and Seton Hall in St. John's, who have previously offered. Those offers figure to be just the tip of the iceberg here for this up-and-coming Bronx star. Captain Jack is viewed as a possible first-round pick in the 2025 NBA Draft. He lives in the Bronxwood section of the Bronx and was a gold medal winner with USA Basketball's 16-under team in 2021. Jackson is already cashing in on his talent, too. Now that high school and collegiate athletes can monetize their name, image, and likeness, Jackson and Boogie Fland of Stepanak are the first two in the state to do so. The two Bronx Phenoms inked their first NIL deal late last year with Spreadshop, an on-demand merchandise platform. Spreadshop has partnered with 15 college athletes so far and allows players to build their personal brand. Congrats to Captain Jack on earning our first Bronx Player of the Week. That's your look at sports. I'm Bobby C.
Hey everyone, welcome back to Open. Our last guest is a Philly native next gen R&B artist with virtuoso vocals, dance moves to live for with a skillful musicianship on the piano. Growing up singing in the church, he always had a passion for music and that passion led him to performing to sold out crowds. He recently appeared on the 16th season of the hit NBC competition series, The Voice. And in 2019, he dropped his album Made in China. And in 2020, his EP, Take Out, both bodies of work remain on constant replay for lovers of passionate and honest R&B. His latest single, Can We Go Back, is an emotional ballad that is sure to resonate with anyone who's been through a relationship that has gone wrong. And joining us to share more, we welcome Julianne King. Hello, welcome. Yes. What is up? What's up? Oh, Happy man. New huh? <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. And uh, unfortunately, we have brought the New Year in being in timeout again. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. However, we're going to talk about the wonderful, exciting life that you led before. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> First, I need to ask, what has life been since appearing on The Voice back in 2019? Uh, life has been pretty kind to me. Um, I'm actually very fortunate to have left the show when I did because I wasn't really stuck in a lot of contractual obligations. And I was able to release Made in China as soon as it was done. Um, I think I have a lot of, my parents and families recognize me more now because of the show. Um, so that's been really cool. Um, but I also gained a lot of following from that show. So now I have just so many friends like all over the world that I'm able to like, stay in contact with. And there's actually a few of them that I actually really like talk to on a regular basis. There's a girl in Toronto, there's a girl in uh, Idaho, there's a guy in Brazil that like I actually talk to like maybe once every other week. That's so, so awesome. I know that's that's the beauty of, of being able to communicate, uh, communicate, excuse me, globally. Um, but let's talk about uh, really quickly Made in China and why you created a whole album around that title. Well, that year in China ch truly changed my life. Um, I remember, you lived a whole year in China. Mm -hmm. I remember and you, and you stayed in different hotels in China. Yeah, I remember taking the job because I had just like fired my management at the time. Me and my boyfriend broke up. I just lost my job. Like it was at my lease at my apartment was ending, and I was like, "Wow, okay, y'all can have this." I'm out. So I'll go to China. And it was pretty depressing at first because it was all the major holidays and my birthday without family and friends. But there was like a switch. And it was like, if you can't change your circumstance, then change your perspective. And as soon as I did that, I started having the time of my life. And I really started having conversations with so many different types of people who did not look like me, did not come from my background. And it truly changed the way that I viewed the world and what I wanted for myself and how I wanted the world to view me as well. So I made an album about it just because when I think about the time before, during, and then even after, I'm like, wow, that was like a very pivotal moment. And you know, some people go to the mountains or they go to like, you know, an oasis to have this kumbaya moment. Mine just so ended up happening in China. In hotels in China, that's what's up. But now we're going to jump to I Italy because um, I understand uh, Vogue Italia is uh, uh, they publish uh, ed your editorial shoot. Yeah, they are. They're they're really loving the kid. I actually we started announcing the photos from the editorial shoot, and then one day I woke up and they had published it, and it was like the biggest of deals uh, for me and the team, just because I believe that it started to allow people to see me in the way that I see myself fashion wise. Um, and then just recently they posted, they published uh, not just one photo, but two photos. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Um, thank you. From the actual um, music video shoot. So, I, you know, I never really, I never really saw myself as a model before, but now it's giving very much to have one of the greatest stamps of approval is pretty cool, especially for someone like myself. 
that's amazing. I, that's amazing for, to, you know, a Philly boy, right? Who's, who's right. traveling China and has, or, or, you know, been seen on a, on a national level, making his global uh, recognition um, go even viral, right? Because yeah. you had a, a double Dutch, a viral double Dutch moment last summer, as you call it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I was leaving vacation. I had to go pick up a keyboard and I saw some girls jumping rope. Now that was, that was my exercise when I was a child. That's actually how I stayed very fit. Um, and I used to be out for hours on the block with the girls. And a part of me was like, uh, I'm not gonna do it. And then at the very last second I said, mm, why not? So I did it and I posted the video, not thinking anything of it. I had a lot of salt water in my, in my like system at the time. So I wasn't really feeling the best. I went to sleep, woke up, my phone was almost dead um, from the amount of attention on Twitter and Instagram, but really Twitter, like it, it shot over about two and a half million views. Wow, from you jumping double touch. <laughs> double touch. I mean, I was going in though, no shade. I, jumping up, clapping under the leg, turning around, giving... <laughs> I get it. I get it. I'm yeah. a double dutcher too. And so, um, so we're running out of time, and and I know you wanted to talk about go and do before we go. So, real quick, before we introduce the uh, wonderful presentation you've offered us uh, for our closing. So, go and do was the actual single that was released around the viral double dutch moment, and I believe that it was a great introductory just to those who may have not known me as a person. Um, and I believe that it kind of like ushered in the very next era for me. Um, which is now following up with Can We Go Back. Um, Can We Go Back is actually one of my favorite records that I think that I've ever written, um, just because I really feel like it is the heart um, and the emotion of really who Julian is as a person and as a lover, um, both musically and like lyrically, I think it, it pinned the tail on the donkey and it's gonna usher in the later records. So I'm really excited. Well, we're excited for you and we're excited that you're sharing it with our viewers and thank you for remaining authentic and true to you. Thank Everyone, you. don't go anywhere because when we return, Julian King is going to perform his latest single, Can We Go Back? Welcome back here now to perform Can We Go Back live from Rec Philly, a Live Nation stage. Please welcome Julian King. I'm still not over you. I should have told you. Was too emotional to open up and talk to. Now where you talking to? Give me a month of you. Is he worth building with and tearing down what we've been through? Tell me my second chance is still in someone's bed. Instead of getting dressed and fighting for the love we had. I want to love you more and get past arguments. Relive the moments when the passion was just that intense. Can we go back to what we had in the past? Forget who started first and work 
gon' make it in last year. Can we go back to where emotions collapse? And I seen you with your words, preferred you at your best, yeah. Can we go back? Can we go back? Uh, can we go back? 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 Yeah. So you know that I needed you the most And you know you've never been a fool I just want to make sure that you can Anything you could ever want I just want to be here for a while Loving you feels better every day I know you want to be held down And baby, you gon' be And you know this is just like that Baby, I'm always have your back Then you know this and then you know that You can always count on me But the thing about this when it gets like that I need only truth and facts don't you lie to me, and that's on everything. So can we go back to what we had in the past? Forget who started first, then we're gonna make it in last, yeah. Can we go back to where emotions collapse? And I seen you at your worst, we heard you at your best, yeah. Can we go back? Can we go back? So can we go back? So can we go back? 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 Cause now I got you all caught up on love. Ain't no excuse, I want you back. Love, yeah. Can we reconnect to do it again? Oh. Can we go back? So can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? So can we go back to what we had in the past? Forget who started first and what gon' make it in last year. Can we go back to where emotions collapse? And I seen you at your worst, preferred you at your best. Can we go back? Can we go back? Back? Can we go back? 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 Can we go back? Can we go back? 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 Can we go back? Can we go back? 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 Oh no, back? 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 Oh no, 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 back? 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 Can we go back? Can we go back? 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 Ha! Can we go back? Bang, 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 bang. Woo! That was Julian King. And for more on Julian King, visit him on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at It's Julian King. That is our show today, mi gente. Thanks to all our guests for coming through and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of the show, you can check out the Recablecast tonight and 24 hours a day at BronxNet.tv. I'm Rina Valentin. And from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide us prosperity y amor. Adiós.